Good morning, everyone. I warmly welcome you all for today's session. Hope you all enjoyed the weekend. Now, let us start our today's session. We have with us Dr. Ramesh Chandra Malik. I would like to introduce him in brief. Dr. Ramesh Chandra Malik teaches Odia language and literature in the PG department of Odia language and literature, Utkal University. He had his PhD degree in translation studies, Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies, University of Hyderabad. He worked as a UGC postdoctoral fellow in linguistics, Center for Applied Linguistics, University of Hyderabad. His research interests include translation studies, general linguistics, and literary criticism. With this brief introduction, I warmly welcome Dr. Ramesh Chandramalik to deliver his lecture on the topic translation nation and audio language movement over to you sir thank you good morning everyone i am very thankful to cil mysore the ntm team has given me this opportunity to deliver a talk on language nation and some extent to audio language movement I also express my happy thanks to Professor Madhusmita Pati, Dr. Vasan Choudhury, Dr. Sipanna Das, whom I know, uh, Dr. Aditya Panda, and my dear colleagues. My lecture will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will talk about translation, translation history and why a nation required a national literature and that has through translation process and in the second part i will justify the particularly what happened in odisha and how translation has a great role in odia language movement let me begin with a quotation that given by a theoretician, Yohan, 1993, indeed one might even assert that without translation, there is no history of the world. Consider the rise of certain civilizations, the Roman world, the Italian, French, English, German, and Russian, and complete the role of translation in the development of those cultures. It means that if we want to study a civilization and we have to study the translation as well as the translation history. Now, what is the basic difference now? The translation and translation history. The translation and translation history are clearly distinct in the sense that Translation is a process and a product of rendering textual materials of one language in another. Whereas, translation history refers to the phenomenology of translation process and product studied from the historical point of view. Translation history provides the ideas about the role of translation and translator's motivations from the historical perspectives. In other words, translation history is a multidisciplinary subject that helps to study the translation theories from the historical point of view and also the provides the ideas about growth of a vernacular language, literature, and socio-political issues related to the development of linguistics identity of a speech community. The linguistics and cultural interpretations of human behaviors in translated literature are given equal importance in the translation history. That is why translation history is one of the unique resources of the literary renaissance, signifying the linguistics authenticity and social identity of native speakers. Development and standardization of mother tongue are considered 
tangible aspects of translation which can be studied through translation history on the other hand in other words translation strategies development of a script and a writing system grammar and punctuation literary vision values and styles sociology of language and culture are the most significant activities of translation that can be understood through translation history another important goal of translation history is to discover the biography of language and its historical development through the ages language competency culture competency and the subject competency of the translators can be evaluated through the methodological equipments of translation history from translation history one can evaluate the linguistics interpretation of translated text which con which contain linguistics and social semiotic perspectives of the embedded text the activity of translation through history is a record of the politics of translation and it also enrollment in the process of literary textualization this might be the reason for a movement against the google dikuk of dominant languages so translation and translation history both are important aspect of translation studies or translatology that need to be discussed and explore in every language with reference to their linguistics and literary culture it is worth mentioning here that the development of vernacular languages and the politics of literary canonization can be determined through translation history translation through history refers to not only the historical importance of translation but also the role of translation and its interface according to the long 2007 Page 63. Begin the quote. Ideally, at the combines the history of translation theory with the study of literary and social trends in which translation has played a direct and a catalytic part. On quote, in the development of national literature through translation history, one can be equate the relationship of the past, the present. and the future of the nation in studying the linguistic resources and the literary tradition wherein translation played a significant role the linguistic responsibility of the people and their emotional attachment to their language basically mother tongue identity and the loyalty and the visible aspect of the language rights to be stressed in the frame of translation history language as a social phenomenon manifest the human expressions first and then recognizes a plural identity by a linguistics community it is also considered as an intangible form of cultural practices which reflects the versatile ideology of human culture through, ling through linguistics interpretation so it has been considered as one of the most distinctive feature of a culture which may be described in a simplest manner as the totality of the belief and practice of a society translation is a one of the scientific activities that try to bridge the gaps between two texts two languages and two cultures it is not only a method of rendering the textual materials from one language into another but also but also the meant experimenting ideas and insighting from another culture to enrich one's own language in this context lambert's statement is very appropriate who said historians of the translation are needed more than ever before and the history of translation helps translator those research travels to emerge from the shadows and helps us to the better appropriate their contribution to intellectual life 
the pages that follows are aiming with the figures that have laid to their mark on the profession in various ways in investigating alphabets enriching languages encouraging the emergence of national literature disseminating technical and social knowledge scientific knowledge propagating religions writing dictionaries their contribution has been prodigious translation cannot be disassociated from the nation of progress some even maintain that a society can be measured by the translations its aspects the main purpose of translation history is to determine the translator's motivations toward language literature and culture finally the nation and nationalism their ideological consequences and the practical experience will provide the theories or models adopted in translating various texts translation history explains the reason behind translating certain specific specified text in retrospect and their social educational context it is a protocol of translator start translations and the translator strategies through the ages have varied enormously depending on the demand of publishers publishers readers as well as their personal preferences and their studies which undertake detailed analysis of individual translators in their social and historical context which have an important role to play in the filling the gaps in translation history translation history is the source of a nation as long again states negotiating translation history is rather like navigating <coughs> with various specialist maps individually they give up different feature of the cultural linguistics political historical religious technological literary landscape but there is too much information to make a single map of them so consequently it is necessary to separate out some relevant aspect of each in order to draw a specialist translation history map therefore translation history maps the unique resources of the linguistics community needed to be studied from an interdisciplinary perspective the main aim of this lecture is to study the translation history of odia language which is an under discovered translation history helps to define an account for the policies employed by past translators and so gives at least a point of departure for developing strategies now the history of odia translation and the various socio political regions associated with its translation activities during the colonial period is under speech the socio religious political educational linguistics and economical issues were interrelated with the translation activities in odisha especially colonial odisha which were equally important to be studied from the translation studies of perspectives at same the time the colonial power british language policy educational facilities and missionary activities were implemented in odisha division ensuring the position of odia as an independent language odia translation history were taken as an experimental ground for studying translation strategies and their function in social issues like language standardization economic interest and nationalistic agenda like linguistics awareness of a native speaker and their literary participations in the state formation the important issues which needs to be explored through translation history is that odia translation history provides a multidisciplinary perspective of translation which is necessary to be discussed in conceptualizing 
the importance of translation and translation history in the development of Odia language, literature and culture. As we know, Odia is a classical language and a scheduled language of the Indian constitution occupies the official language status in Odisha. During the period of 1803 to 1936, Odisha was neglected because it was always a part of other provinces. By that time, most of the Indian territories were ruled by the British government. Odisha was divided spatially into three main presidencies. Presidencies at the time, the presidencies of Bengal, Madras, and the central provinces. The people of Odisha did not allow the British government to capture the region easily. It took around 60 years from then to fully occupy Odisha and bring it under the British East India Company. Finally, the company annexed with Odisha at least the three different phases, coastal and north in 1803. The western hill track is Samanpur 1849 and South Odisha in 1868. Now, I am highlighting the foundation of British language, British rule in Odisha and linguistic situation. In the Odisha division, I quote Jacob Samuel, from the beginning of the company's rule, the officers and servant of a company adopted an unsystematic attitude towards the people of Odisha. They all were excluded from every job, such as the police, revenue, and salt department. The Walter Euro rightly observed that the exclusion of the genuine Hindu inhabitants of Odisha from every situation tends to check the diffusion of the knowledge of the British system and administration. It has been observed that linguistics incapability of Odias was the main cause of exclusion from the administrative service. At the same time, the court language of Odisha was Persian. A very few Odia Amalas spoke the Persian language perfectly and fluently. Before the British, the key posts were hereby, held by outsiders who had the knowledge of a Persian and Bangla and English. The Odia Amalas did not have proficiency either in Persian or Bengali or English, which were the language of British administration. That is why the Odias were not given an opportunity in British administration instead of the Muslims and Bengalis who were preferred to obtain the jobs. Meanwhile, the British government and various missionaries operated in Odisha attempted in a limited way to establishing printing presses and educational institutions deeply to introduce English education into this track. This is its own way prepared the ground for growth of nationalistic feeling in later years. There are ample examples which show that the colonial environment virtually brought out a customary effects over the vernaculars in Odisha. The question of a vernacular and actual the national identity were articulated simultaneously by production of various types of literature. The Odia translators and writers struggled to create a new value in 19th century Odisha. The positioning the vernacular in administrative and educational levels was a very sensitive issue at the time. On the one hand, the linguistics domination of the language, and on the other hand, the British language policy for lower provinces made resilience of the new literary journals. And many new literary journals were created out of the colonial thirds implanted through the translation activities. There are several socio political reasons which encountered or encouraged the translation activities in Odisha. The linguistics emancipation from the Bengalis who was one of the main causes. The Odia nationalism was formed on the basis of the language right, hesitation, and literary imaginations in which 
the role of translation occupied an important position. At the same time, the British language policy, proselytizing activities of missionaries, and the national enthusiasm of colonized intellectuals helped the Odia language to get the linguistics emancipation and free linguistics environment for literary creativeness. The role of translation in the Odia language movement was significant in establishing the linguistics authenticity of Odia in 19th century. Though the historians, scholar of literature, and linguists of Odisha have studied the same field, this area needs further investigation. In one of the main objectives of the study, to uncover the neglect aspect of Odia language movement. The translation activities of the native and non native Odia translators were to resolve the important issues like religious conversion textbook preparation, preparing dictionaries and grammars, language registration, language standardization, literary canon formation, script evolution, which were often related to the national interest. The socio-cultural background of the translation needs in the particular period and its relevance are necessary to be discussed in the situating the new, the views of translation history. The historical development of Odia translation and its social, political, and cultural background are equal essential to be discussed and to find out the themes and perspective of Odia translations. The historical evidence of Odisha, so why and how the Odia language movement took place against the linguistic domination of the Bengalese. Though the British language policy was introduced purposefully, for the growth of the vernacular in all the Indian provinces, it was delayed in Odisha by the Odia speaking people, mainly due to the Pika Rebellion 1817, the Odia language movement 1868, and the movement for separate provinces during 1931 to 1936. These were the symbols of patriotism and nationalism. And the act of translation occupied a center stage in these movements. These movements and their extraordinary contribution in the establishing the Odia identity are absolutely obviously important and they can be understood through the translation activities. The Pika Rebellion was one of the foremost examples of linguistics deprivation that leads to the foundation of Odia language movement, or we can interpret, this is the formative stage of Odia language movement, which was happened in 1868, that laid the foundation of Odia language movement. Let us discuss the link among the Pika Rebellion translation and the Odia language. The Pika Rebellion translation and the Odia language movement. How translation can situate a rebellion? There were several problems in educating the Odia people properly in three different provinces of the British administration. I quote Kupchandani, by that time they could not resolve the basic three issues of education, the content, the spread and the medium. The vernacular language medium of Odisha was extremely poor and the people did not have the multilingual skill in order to work under the British Institute Company. Not a single person was found in the British government in 1803. One of the colonial historians, Tainavi, rightly mentions that when we, the company, first occupied Odisha in 1803, there was hardly a single native of Odisha in government employed. The language of the court and the public officers was Persian and it was until 1805 that the commissioner directed that in all written communication with the native of the provinces, the subject should be written in Odia as well as Persian. The order of the commissioner could not show any result instantly because the Odia Mohoria, the record keepers, were less capable in comparison to the Bengali clerk. 
again Toynabe states, I quote, when this order desisted the employment of Odium warrior who, though skillful enough with their iron pain and bundle of palm leaves, were almost helpless when require writing on proper with a ordinary pain. There are, they are said to have been slow in acquiring any facilities into and bracket to them new method of writing, ignorant of a business in general and especially of the English system of revenue accounts as indeed they well might be. Bracket end. All the best Ministerial appointments were consequently in the hands the hands of the Bengali Amalaj, the bureaucrats, who attracts by the high pay that had to be offered to pursue the requisite standard of efficiency. Left their homes in Bengal and bringing their families with them, settled in the provinces and became naturalized to Odia. Their descendants hold at the present day, the chief officers in the various court of revenue, criminal and civil law. The regular domination of a Bengalis made them resort to bravery, corruption, pollution and also forgery in Odisha administration. Banerjee admits that, in fact, Bengali of a low type ruled Odisha for nearly half a century after the conquest, having control of judicial and executive work, the Bengali found Odisha at the heavy means of the ruin and their ancient heritage passed into the hand of Bengali Jamidars, landlords. Then I, this is the quotation of Mayadhar Man Singh. This is the statement of Man Singh. The process of Bengalization in Odisha had a paralyzed the ideas and activities of the contempt by the Bengalis caused events inconvenience from them in getting the job opportunity under the British administration. The main cause was the monolingualism of the Odias as opposed to the multilingualism of the Bengalis. Multilingual proficiency of the Bengalis helped them to monopolize the administration Job in Odisha. Afterwards, it became a sign of serious threat to the Odisha. In order to protest against the Bengali domination and the irresponsibility of the British administration, a passive the movement was started by the Odia pikers for their linguistic identity after 14 years of the British rule. During these 14 years, the people of Odisha experienced exploitation by the British administration as well as the Bengali officials. As a result, there was a massive resistance by the Odias, notably the Pike Rebellion in 1817. It was the first linguistic protest against the British rule and the Bengalis. The Odia scholar, Dr. Samantrai, Gavanandra Das, Vibhunendra Narayan Patnai, and the historian Prabhat Mukherjee, Kishori Mohan Patra, Jai Krishna Samal, Padas Chandra Das did not discuss the Pika rebellion from a linguistic perspective. Though they have stressed the root of the Odia language movement, which took place between 1868 to 1872 through the Odi, through the Pika rebellion. They have not pointed out the role of translation and also linguistics domination of a Bengali, which worked as a key instrument in it. The language policy of the British administration created an enormous difficulties for understanding the rules and regulations meant for the native in order to pay their land revenues and other domestic taxes. There is a noticeable example which shows how linguistics domination and linguistics misappropriation lead to a social revolution against the British it's the company, that is the Pike Rebellion. The military chief of Khorda, Bhakshi Jagavandu Riddhadara Brahmarabara Rai. The brutality of the Bengali officers, Krishna Chandra Singham, who was a polyglot having proficiency of Arabic, the 
Bangla, Odia, Persian, and English worked as a Dewan under G. Broom, the collector of Katak. His intimate friend Chandra Prasad Singh was a Sinastada under the Tausil of Puri, who assisted to the divest Rahanga estate from Jagabandhu's possession in using the expression Rahanga Ogera, Samantra and Mukherjee states. Rahanga was a one of the farming estate of Jagabandhu, which was later purchased by Krishna Singh by the notification of the government in 1807. There is no mention of the Rahanga estate uh, specifically in that notification of the government which selling out the estate whereas Rodanga was included under Ogera Kila Rodanga. Walter Euro states that using the word Ogera that means ETC including some of other things belonging to the same helped tactically taking away the estates Rodanga from the Bakshi Jagabandhu's possession. The problem was created due to the vagueness in the word Ogera in modern standard Odia, the artful linguistics interpretation by Krishna Chandra Singh and his intimate friend Chandra Prasad Singh. Later on, it was understood by Jagabandhu and he found that Radhanga has been sold away along with the Rahanga that has been betrayed. Linguistics command of both the Bengali officials, Krishna Chandra and Chandra Prasad, made a political and judicial issue for Jagabandhu, which insulted him, and ultimately that situated became one of the serious causes of Pika Rebellion that has mentioned in Walter Hero's Pika Rebellion report, para number 18 and 1888. Along with the linguistics discrimination by the Bengalis and fault system of administration of the country by the English was mainly responsible for the whole trouble. The linguistics misappropriation of the Bengalis and the fluent British, the faulty British administration policy caused the Pika Rebellion. And the indigenous militia group of Odisha started the revolution against the monopoly of the British administration as well as the linguistics domination of the Bengali. The people of the people's hesitation for vernacular language and translation of the rules and regulations of British East India Company or government into vernacular language Odia were the serious factors for the Pika rebellion. A scholar of Odia language movement Natavara Samantra states that Pika rebellion is nothing other than a protest against the destitute administration of the foreigner. There was another related cause advocated by G. M. Das, a dishonesty of some of the Bengali clubs and negligence of the British administration. And Prabhat Mukherjee also states that his views are not only really appropriate in the context of the linguistics domination of Bengali. In this context, the historical linkage by Panchanan Mohanty is clear and convincing. He states that a resistance against British rule, notably Pika Rebellion in 1817, a protest in the way the British government had treated was Jagavandu Vidyadhar Brahmaravar Rai Mahabhatra, who was the, or the king of Kurda. The missionary colonial officers and colonized intellectuals all took part in this movement. His hypothesis clearly indicates how Jagabandhu was humiliated and discriminated by the British administration. Simultaneously, the Bengali multilingual, multilingual skill helped them to get job under the British East India Company or British administration and that is how they monopolized the whole system of a British administration in the Odisha. The Pika rebellion steamed not only from the economical deprivation, salt monopoly, humiliation of the Raja, the miserable condition of a peasant, rapacity, accession, and also the torture by the Amalas, but also due to failure of the rules and regulations of 
the company. The historical evidence for it was given by Walter Hero, an acting judge and magistrate of Patak. His brief report on the same was submitted to the government on May 13, 1888, that shows all the roots of the Pike Rebellion and the role of British administration in it. Hero's thorough discussion of the Pike Rebellion states some of the genuine factors related to translation and its importance. And he claims that, I quote, Hero, they, the native of Orissa, seem unconscious and any particular benefit which have resulted to from the operation of British laws and regulations. Well, it was very apparent that they have interested to assessment, require payment of revenue in silver interest of coverage, argumented the price of salt to six times its farmer's rate, and disposes of words of two-thirds of the original native properties from their estates. The people of the interior seemed also to have taught all applicants to the code vein and fruitless the late years unless besides the legal authorized expenses of stamp paper, the fees etc. they could not further produce as a considerable sum to purchase for favor at least the reverence of the southern Amalaj. Translation of the regulations exist only in the Persian and the Bengali language. Not a single regulation has been translated into the great vernacular of the provinces. The quote end. Walter Hero has further stated the question of the failure of the British laws and regulations which were introduced in Odisha was a matter of grave concern that not a single regulation had been translated into Odia. The language of the people in Odisha the target language of translation were Persian and the Bangla, which were actually difficult to understand by the common people. To add this inconvenience, the government had followed a policy of systematic exclusion of the native of Orissa from all officers in their administrative mechanism. Not only they, not only that had been subjected to exploitation by the British Amalas, who monopolized all subordinate officers jobs of the administrative at the same time, but also exclusion of the audience from all officers of trust and responsibility had been to check out the confine the diffusion of knowledge of the British system to great extent. In such a situation, the people of Odisha were not aware of the British rules and the regulation, even the text values were not written in Odia. The people of Odisha were mostly monolinguals. The failure of Odia and the exclusion of Odia Amalaj from the company's service were also important causes of the Pike Rebellion. The, import, the, the impact of this rebellion uncovered the fault of the British administration and brutality of the Bengalis after that the British government tried to reform the administration policies in the favor of Odias. After the 15 year of the Rebellion, there is another nationalist movement in Odisha called the Odia Language Movement in 1868. The role of translation and exclusion of native officials were proposed under the British administration for the reformative purposes. Along with it, colonial officers, missionaries and colonized intellectuals came forward to participate in the same for establishing their own view points. Participant of native and non-native translators have helped to the further the linguistics movement and national ideologies through their translation involving their survival interest during this period. The Pike Rebellion of 1817 shook the British administration and subsequently they try to resolve the social, cultural, and economic issues that had demanded that damaged the social life of the common people in Odisha. The British administration and the philanthropic activities of the missionaries introduced several developmental schemes for the growth of education that enhanced the value of the vernacular language. The first tried to implement the use of vernaculars in the religious activities 
and then for the pedagogical purposes. On the other hand, the colonial power and the interest of colonial officials attempted to resolve the linguistics and conflict between Odia and the Bengalis. On the other hand, missionary activities wanted to reform the Odia language, literature, cultural, history, theology, science, and technology. At a later stage, they inspired the new educated native people for giving the more attention their livelihood. The history of modern Odia translation was started by the some philanthropic missionaries and it intended to be discussed elaborately because it will help us to understand the perspective of translation history and its participation in creating literary genres, language standardization and cultural historiography. It has been noticed that after the end of the Pika rebellion, the drastic change was observed in British administration. They ruled Odisha dividing into separate districts. A new language policy was implemented. The British government in which the favor to use the Odia language in administration as a substitute for Persian and Bangla. For educating the native people of Odisha, some educational institutes were established and the Odia people got job opportunity in the British administration. Later on, this process was followed and meanwhile, the missionaries and colonial literatures joined them to serve the British administration. And now I will discuss that the translation committee in Odisha. It is very, very crucial. The question of a vernacular language and its position were sorted out by the district commissioner of Odisha and they introduced a translation policy for improving the Odia language and standardizing the Odia language also. On the account of development of vernacular languages in 1839, the government general Ackland, the governor general Ackland proposed in his minute that the English text should be translated into Indian languages for various reasons. He tried to reintroduce the vernacular teaching, which was banned by T.B. Markley for this purpose. He extended financial support for establishing a roaming vernacular schools in lower provinces. To promote the Odia language, the government decided to translate the gazetteers from the purpose of the government constitute a selection board of appending translators in order to prepare the gazetteer in 1840 on July 18. This was the initiated by a committee comprised the then commissioner of Odisha the civil and session judge H. B. Harthen, district magistrate of Puri, collector J. K. R., deputy collector Rajeshundar Rai, and Munshi Abdul Diyan. They decided to appoint arms certain for his command over the languages English, Bangla, and Odia. As a result, the translation committee selected arms certain to be a translator for official purposes of Odisha. The committee expressed the views on the translation policy that it was the right way to resolve the Odia language discrimination and they declared, I quote, the work Odia translation is greatly wanted. It would be produced a in level good in improving the language which is not, which, which, which is not want it should be and that committee has little doubt that would greatly facilitate the medium of communication between the government and the governor. That is why the government agreed to publish the gazette and the rules and regulation in Odia. I'm certain was the first editor of the Odia gazette. In 1842, the government asked Reverend I'm certain to translate the acts and government proposals in 1844. The Southern Board of Revenue also approved the same to translate certain books in Bangla to Odia. The Siva Prasad Singh Munshi proposed to publish Odia translation of a police regulations of 1817 and fortunately it was translated by Gopalavan Navadas. The government of Odisha, a government of Bengal, 
agree to buy 100 copies of the recommended by Goldsbury Commissioner to government. The same. After certain retirement, the government appointed Charles Lacy, and after his departure, his son William Henry Lacy took over the charge of editorship and also the responsibility of the translation profession up to 1807. Throughout the 19th century, with the help of missionaries and the government edited and published the Odia Gazette and the translation activities were supported by the Court of Director. In the same year also, that Horton, the modification of the plans of translation government regulation from beginning to the end of such state, head of judicial authority to be authorized to selection of translation into Odia, such as rules and regulation and acts of government appropriating to the provinces as would add the suggestion that forthcoming regulation of the government gazette are also to be published in Odia. If the expenses of this work will be considered too great, I would recommend that the Odia translation of the government gazette here to be alone published. It was the saying of the collector. The British language and the education policy also supported the use of vernacular in the administration as well as education in Odisha provinces. That is why the translation that helped to not only the writing of the textbook in various areas of language, but also the preparation of grammar and dictionary and the language learning and teaching, employment and economic interest, language conservation and the preservation. At the same time, the translation also helped to 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 create the liter new literary genres in Odia. Then uh, I conclude in saying that the translation and translation history is quite important and how the translation and the role of translation also very important to standardize a vernacular language, which not only happened in Odia, but also it happened in all Indian languages. Basically, in Punjab and Odisha, the same way two linguistic states also formed in 1936. I think uh, so. I'm very, again, I'm very thankful to uh, CIL uh, Mansoor, uh, NTM, uh, Lesson Translation Mission Team, as well as uh, the coordinator and co coordinator of Ramadevi Women University, Odisha. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it was specific to Odia, and one could know how a language is established, you know, and the socio cultural and the political processes behind the establishment of you know, Odia and Odisha. And it is interesting to note, you know, the role of translation in it. Thank you, sir. You gave a you know comprehensive, you know, uh, um, history, I can say, you know, a, a comprehensive history, you know, of you know, uh, uh, Odia language movement and, you know, the role of translation. Let me uh, the clarify one, though it is uh, the Odisha specific, but I have taken Odisha as an example. Yes. And right. he, if you can see also the Bangla, the language movement yes. might not happen, but the same process, the, in the yes. same process, translation or transcreation, the language standardization happened. Yes. There is a famous book by Sisir Kumar Das, William Carey, uh, William Carey to Vidyasagar. And yes. he himself says that how the Carey's translation and the era of translation helped to standardize and improve the, 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 uh, the, the, the prose of Vahla. Okay. The similar things can be that uh, treated uh, that Hindi and also Punjabi and also Telugu and yes. also the many that modern Indian languages. Yes, you are right. We can think about, you know, and we, we can also, you know, correlate the history of, you know, translation in Marathi, Gujarati, Hindi, Telugu, you know, and 
uh, i think you know our participants from other languages they can correlate they can you know find out actually what has happened in, in their language you know this will be you know uh, after this training program this will be a task for you if you want to pursue something or if you want to write something on in history of marathi literature and the role of translation in it or you know that to telugu or you know hindi okay i wanted to know what is the first book translated by whom and what is that book and who is the translator that is the first few, uh, is the yes, latter yes, part yes. of the question and first part of the question is what kind of measures taken by the native speakers to standardize uh, the language okay and and moreover uh, i am very excited to hear all the historical perspective of the translation there is an article by william uh, uh, in uh, you know susil uh, Su kumar das susil kumar das his phd his uh, research book uh, in that uh, one article is the awakening india title itself awakening linguistic india okay. that is there in william carey library i hope you might have gone through there are uh, some more details in it you can uh, look into that okay i am responding we'll find to time okay i am responding to you thank you matthew tell me the first new testament translated by william kerry 1807 okay okay and for me the native is native translators means that uh, those who learn odia and those who acquire odia they are the native translator language okay. acquisition and language learning those have acquired the odia they are the native translator and those learn odia they are the non native translators william carey i'm certain they are non native odia translators they are the nat not native speaker of odia they have learnt odia okay and the okay. native speaker native translator pagrimon chanapati and jagannamohan lala and the many people they are there are many okay. people and gopal vallabh das who translated the police manual yeah. okay thank you thank you aditya good morning and it was really a nice uh, talk uh, and i really could make myself free for the whole time except for 5 10 minutes in the between so i am i'm glad that i could listen to the whole conversation and uh, like uh, there are certain things uh, it's not exactly a question but um, uh, there is when he uh, today there was a reference in the lecture regarding translation between indian languages and there was a reference to punjabi odia and we come to marathi and other but uh, there it's a, sometimes it bothers me why there is uh, why translations between indian languages is uneven that is one thing that uh, i wonder about why is it uneven next point that i would like to um, like that that again i think of is you know the translation of categories of books other than uh, that of literature if you go to the market you will see that um, translate literature books you will find abundantly uh, and uh, but not uh, any other any other categories of books so these are the two things that uh, probably translators should uh, look into these are not my questions i'm not asking like why this is not there but these are my these are certain things that uh, came to me like we need all categories of books to be translated but literally the books are available but not the, so that is one and the next point that i wanted to point out that these two points which is uh, something uh, that we have to think about and if we go into this uh, very um, um, like we go into this uh, whole process of translation and we take up translation seriously we should look into different categories of translations and then that again sometimes uh, it is so the next point that uh, uh, comes to me is that can we go for a medium language for example something in malayalam has been translated into english 
and then from that we translate into odia so how much uh, it can be done because english is the uh, conduit language which we use and we can use that so probably that would help in uh, like sliding over this gap like like we don't know much about what is being uh, translated in marathi or uh, we read english but marathi and odia how to link these vernacular languages maybe english can form as a conduit language that is right. another observation that i wanted to uh, like i don't know whether it is acceptable or not but i know of people who are doing it uh, yes. and probably that is a way we can uh, bring different vernacular language closer to one another Yes. That is all from very my side. Good, very good observation, madam. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank uh, you. I'm agree with your proposal. English can be uh, considered as a TT in the sense that if vernacular language will be source, the English will be target text. Again, the target text to become a source, then uh, it can be done, uh, which is happening in India, basically. it requires for a multilingual country in another way uh, the my uh, that uh, observation is this that and we should translate a language uh, that uh, which language holds the knowledge and that language has to be translated into the language which is under the progress in the sense that suppose sanskrit will be the language of knowledge and we have to translate from sanskrit into the vernacular language and if english has also knowledge then it we should translate from that language into the mother tongue so that our language competency of mother tongue is better than the language competency of the others that is why alanda has a very good book that is called the third language and we should think about of the third language which is the language of translator and it is a different person all together and our attachment our emotion are also our profession everything includes in translation if i like i am a professor of english i must translate from english into other language which i know but the translation theory says that we have to translate that which language or language competency uh, is better then we should also think about it yeah the both uh, direction yes. uh, we have to go otherwise uh, the language will not be progressed yeah i will add to this actually uh, madam uh, actually these days so what is happening you know and the number of uh, non literary text translation is becoming more and more actually these days as compared to you know uh, just you know two de decades or three decades before if we compare it now it is happening more actually and literary texts you know it is under a kind of balance actually now uh, no translation but one translation is a team work not a uh, that uh, <laughs> single man It should be yeah. team work. Yes. So what yes. I mean to say is, when we go out to the market, we find more books of this. Yes. Yeah. I at government level and other level, uh, books are being translated. Knowledge texts are being translated. But uh, the, when you go into walk into bookshops, you will not find many of them like that. Like yes. so, the literary works yeah. which you find, not the other one. That is. Uh, yes. That is something of concern. Now, madam, what is happening is. now we are crossing the boundary actually what we call literature now the literature you know has crossed its own boundary you can get see we have a self help books we have you know uh, some other books on you know cooking and other things you know and we uh, some new areas are emerging with that you know i think uh, you know uh, the category is also getting minimized you know uh, day by day the category is being minimized i don't know you know uh, in future whether you know uh, and when we are uh, uh, we are thinking about translation and interdisciplinary studies you know how we will you know uh, figure out in this category there mm. okay. so these are the discuss and some of your questions actually these are research questions madam 
we you know may not uh, come to you know uh, a particular uh, you know point here you know or i would cannot uh, you know meet uh, some you know answers here now actually because we need to do some research how as as madam asked you know as our madam observed that you know how you know the translation into indian languages is uneven you know this is uneven actually that's that's a research question okay so uh thank you madam thank you for you know this observation yeah, thank you would like hello thank uh, thank you sir because you like engage with one of the very important aspect that is colon uh, uh, like uh, how translation and colonial modernity that is what you uh, touched upon extensively in your work when you talked about language and modernity and I, that was really enlightening and uh, I, I would again like to uh, read uh, here to this recording again and again because that will help us because we are we are also in, uh, engaged with that question translation and colonial modernity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rami sir, for your delightful lecture, and it was fully loaded with many facts and details and everything that you need to understand the development of language in particular um, era and period. Sir, my one query is. Uh, you have mentioned about the standardization of Odia language, right? So, yes. in the process of standardization, you have given the, uh, many historical points of the movements like Pika movement, like uh, Odia language rebellion movement. During the movement period, the Bengali officials and the impact of Britishers, the, that you find the impact on the language of Odia in the development. Is there direct uh, impact on the development of Odia language of English and Bengali language or is there any uh, minor impact on the development of the Odia language because all three languages were there that time into the play in the colonization in the colonization period so Odia was that so it was marginalized but I would just want to know sir yes I want hello, to know. Jaya. Hello, am I you audible? Yes, you am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible, but should be clear again. Again, you tell me last line. Sir, I want to know that is there any impact of English and Bengali language on the standardization of Odia language? Yes, you see, Jaya, this is very uh, uh, the very crucial question when. Uh, when the administration, you see, during that period, Odisha was divided into three parts, and basically, the major part was occupied the Bengal presidency. Yeah. And when the English education started, and we have to prepare the textbooks, and during that time, or particularly in that context. Some of our writers, they have translated from Bangla into Odia. For example, the Fakrimon Chanapati translated Abhidasagar's uh, Ankamala and other textbooks, other Jivan Charita into Odia. Similarly, also Niramani Basanka Bharatavarsar Itihas also translated by Fakrimon Chanapati. In that way, that we followed the method of translation and also transcreation, some of the text translated from Bangla into Odia, no doubt of it. And similarly also, some English text also, literary text and scientific text, text also translated from English into Odia. And same thing happened also Bangla, when the Bangla, I, I have given the example of Sisir Kumar Das, from William Carey to Vidyasagar, the development of a Bangla prose. And also he mentions that in the similar way that adopting translation on transcreation or the adaptation, the Bengali prose also Bengali literature developed. And this is the process kind of this is that is why translation become a process of the standardization of a modern Indian language. And I am given Odia as a, I am given the data from the Odia as an example. And same thing happened in all Indian languages. It can be experimented. 
and Farana Meer, I think, worked on Punjabi. The Punjabi, the history of Punjabi, uh, or some kind of translation and Punjabi language. Farana Meer. It is a wonderful book by Farana Meer. Okay, thank you, sir.